In the last video, we saw how the conjugate base can be stabilized by induction. And we also went a little bit into orbitals, which will be the focus of this video. So let's review the concept that we talked about in the last video, where the different hybridization states of carbon have different electronegativities, which can affect the stability of the conjugate base. And so we talked about how for these three carboxylic acids, as we move to the right, we get an increase in the acidity of these molecules. And so the propionoic acid molecule on the right, this one, is the most acidic out of these three. And we said that had to do with the different hybridization states of the carbons in the molecules. So for example, these two carbons are sp3 hybridized. These two carbons in the double bond are sp2 hybridized. And in this triple bond, here, here, both carbons are sp hybridized. sp hybridized carbons are the most electronegative out of these three. So even though it's the same element, carbon, sp3 hybridized carbons are more electronegative than sp2. sp2 hybridized carbons are more electronegative than sp3 hybridized. And we can think about the effect this has upon the stability of the conjugate base when we realize that the more electronegative something is, the more of an electron withdrawing effect it will have. And so if I think about donating the proton for the propionoic acid molecule, leaving the negative charge on this oxygen here. So that's a negative charge. Let me just go ahead and fix that really fast. So we have a negative one formal charge on this oxygen. That negative one formal charge is delocalized by resonance over this portion of the molecule. And since our sp hybridized carbons are relatively electron withdrawing, we could think about an inductive effect where electrons are pulled to the left here. And that is going to delocalize this negative charge even further. And so this negative charge can be spread out over this portion of the molecule. The more you delocalize the charge, the more stable the conjugate base. The more stable the conjugate base, the more acidic the molecule is. And so it all has to do with the different electronegativities. Let's apply the same concept to the relative acidities of these three molecules. And so on the left, we have ethane, and so ethane, we could say this is the acidic proton on ethane, and has a pKa of approximately 50. So ethane is not very acidic at all. Ethene, or ethylene, well, let's say this is the acidic proton, has a pKa value of 44, so it's getting a little bit more acidic. And then finally, ethyne or acetylene, we'll say this is the acidic proton, the pKa value decreases any, even more to approximately 25. And so, as you move to the right, once again, we get more acidic. So we get an increase in the acidity. And of course, this has to do with the different hybridization states of these carbons. So if we look at this carbon right here, right? so only single bonds to this carbon. So this carbon is sp3 hybridized. If we look at this carbon right here, uh, that's in a double bond, so it is therefore sp2 hybridized. And then finally, this carbon right here, the one the acidic proton is attached to is sp hybridized. So let's go ahead and draw the conjugate bases to these molecules, and uh, let's analyze them in terms of their stability. So we'll start with the conjugate base to ethane. And so ethane has six hydrogens, but we're going to donate one of those protons, and so we would be left with five hydrogens and a lone pair of electrons on this carbon, giving this carbon a negative one formal charge. So we form a carb anion. This lone pair of electrons is going to occupy an sp3 hybrid orbital. An sp3 hybridized orbital uh, formed from one s orbital and three p orbitals. Therefore, it has 25% s character and 75% p character. Since p orbitals are larger, we can think about this as being a relatively large orbital. So I'm going to exaggerate for effect here. So that lone pair of electrons on the carbon occupies an sp3 hybridized orbital. Let's go ahead and draw the conjugate base to ethene. So I'm going to have my carbons double bonded to each other. I'm going to have three hydrogens. And if we lose the, the proton that I had marked in red, that's going to give a lone pair of electrons on this carbon, giving this carbon a negative one formal charge. That lone pair of electrons is going to occupy an sp2 hybridized orbital. An sp2 hybridized orbital came from one s orbital and two p orbitals. Therefore, it has 33% s character and about approximately 67% p character. And so since it has more s character, s orbitals are smaller. 
And so we can think about this hybridized orbital as being a little bit smaller than the one we drew uh, a minute ago. So I'll try to show this as being a little bit smaller than the one on the left here. And finally, acetylene. All right, so if we lose the acidic proton on acetylene and we draw the conjugate base, we have the carbons triple bonded to each other. And then we have a lone pair of electrons on this carbon. And since that carbon is sp hybridized, right, this will be a negative one formal charge for our carb anion. And since this carbon with a negative formal charge is sp P hybridized, that lone pair of electrons occupies an sp hybridized orbital, and sp hybridized orbitals form from one s orbital and one p orbital, and therefore the s character has increased to 50%, so 50% s character. Once again, s orbitals are smaller, and so therefore this hybridized orbital is going to be even smaller than the one we just drew. So I'm see if I can exaggerate that even more, so an even smaller orbital to occupy that lone pair of electrons. Since acetylene, has the lowest value for the pKa, right? So we look over here. Acetylene has the lowest value for the pKa. Acetylene is the most acidic out of these three. And therefore, the conjugate base to acetylene must be the most stable. And so there are many different explanations for why this conjugate base is the most stable. I think the simplest is just to think about electronegativity, right? So you have sp hybridized carbons as being more electronegative. And so if I go back up to the acetylene molecule, Right, this sp hybridized carbon is more electronegative than, say, an sp2 hybridized carbon. And so you could think about you could think about the electrons, right, in this bond right here, moving closer to the carbon, right. So an, an inductive effect like that. And so since it's pulling the electrons more than sp2 or an sp hybridized carbon, it makes sense that the conjugate base is more stable than those other examples. Another way to explain it um, would be to think about the electrons in s orbitals as being closer to the nucleus. And therefore, electrons in s orbitals feel the positive charge of the nucleus more than electrons in p orbitals, which have a higher probability of being further away. And therefore, the higher the s character, the more the more it can better stabilize uh, the negative charge of the conjugate base, since those electrons are closer to the nucleus and feel that positive charge more. Yet another way to explain this would be using energy. Since s orbitals are closer to the nucleus than p orbitals, the electrons in s orbitals are lower in energy. Therefore, electrons in an sp orbital are lower in energy than, um, than electrons in an sp2 or an sp3 orbital. Therefore, you can say electrons are the most stable in an sp orbital. So again, there are many different ways to think about this. For me, electronegativity is good enough. Um, but there are, of course, more advanced explanations. The important thing is just to have a general idea of the trends in acidity when you look at the different hybridization states of the carbon that the acidic proton is attached to.